So, so it's still happy, it's still positive, but there's a little sadness to it, and that creates a fantastic sensation of a little bit of a nostalgia, right? Hey music friends, this is Davi Vasque, I'm a music composer for games, and today we're gonna listen to and talk about some good old classic Minecraft music. This is Sweden, and god, it's been so long since I've heard this last. I'm excited, let's go! I actually am not exactly sure which one is Sweden. Oh, is this one? I think there's a melody here. Is it coming up? This is so moody. Of course, I, I remember this melody. Man, this is the classic Minecraft song. It's so interesting that, man, this music, I, I feel like it's so influential. On the strings. something I've always thought of is it is it weird to say that I think even like stuff like Breath of the Wild maybe uh, was inspired a little bit by Minecraft music you know uh, when this game came out I can think of many games that had this piano kind of moody very minimalistic not very melodic uh, kind of soundtrack and since Minecraft I feel like a lot of people started doing this because it works so well for this kind of vibe of the sandbox game of, of exploration. And when this game came out, I feel like we were at a at a uh, an awkward phase of vi video game music where uh, we we still enjoyed like the the bangers, the strong melodies uh, of you know Super NES days, like we still do enjoy them. But games were becoming different, right? They they were becoming uh, less accommodating for that kind of music so there, there were there were a lot of games with you know like Hollywood boring music and uh, this I feel like this type of music came as an alternative like a kind of music with a lot of character with a lot of atmosphere but without the strong strong melodies that we were used to and this works so well for Minecraft, man. Uh, it doesn't bang on your head with melodies all the time, but there are snippets. There's snippets that we all remember. Like this that's coming up. This, this. This is so iconic. So, so iconic, it's a very good melody, and so subtle too. And by the way, he, throughout this entire part that we heard, he's just repeating the same chord progression. Check this out. He's just repeating this over and over. So it's a happy chord, right? It resolves on a happy chord, there's a happy positive feeling, right? But at the same time, isn't there like a sadness to it, like a, a kind of uh, melancholy to it? Uh, and you, you, you will also notice that the chords I did, they, in, in comparison to the chords in the actual song, don't they sound kind of stiff?
<laughs> my cards sound kind of emotionless in comparison. That's because he's using, I, I did simplified versions of the chords. The chords that he's using, uh, he is including certain notes, very nuanced notes uh, called sevenths and ninths. So for example, in the, in the happy chord, when he resolves into the happy chord, right? He builds, he builds tension with the tense chord. Then he resolves in the happy chord. He doesn't do a normal co happy chord like this. He does this. He added here this note, which is called a ninth. And a ninth here in this context, really, it, it doesn't belong in this chord. It's not necessary for the happy chord. It's just something extra that you put in. And the, the ninth in particular in this context, I've always, always felt like it added uh, a little bit of, of sadness. There's a, a, little, a lo little bit of added uh, melancholy to it. So that's what he's doing. And he's using these tools, he, these uh, little uh, extra notes to increment the song and turn a positive, uh, happy based song into something more nuanced. So, so it's still happy, it's still positive, but there's a little sadness to it. And that creates a fantastic sensation of a little bit of a nostalgia, right? It feels nostalgic, even if, if it's like the first time you're playing this. Yeah, and on top of all that, there's the classic melody that we all remember. Even in this chord here, <laughs> I'm gonna show you something. Check out this chord. So, listen to these two notes. Listen to how ugly they sound. Sounds wrong, right? Sounds out of tune. Is he doing something wrong here? Did he play a note on accident? Uh, it's funny how these two notes sound so ugly, but in, in the context, they sound like this. With the full chord, they sound like this. So this little ugly note here is a note, is one of the extra notes that I talked about. Uh, only this one is a seventh. And it, it gives that kind of jazzy, uh, relaxed vibe that this track has. So it's really fun how the, with these extra notes that I'm talking about, you really have to know what you're doing because sometimes one of these extra notes is not technically wrong to put in, but when you put in, it doesn't really sound very good. It, it, may, it might sound out of tune. It might, it might clash with the others. So you, ha you have to have a good ear. You have to have a good ear, a good musical ear to judge if it sounds good or not, if, it, if it's gonna add to the song or not. And in this case, it certainly adds. There's a, a certain level of uh, dissonance to it. That dissonance creates that sense of sadness. I don't remember this part. Became a little bit more majestic there, more imposing. I don't remember this. I don't remember this part. So now he, what he's doing. Yeah, he's just repeating the same thing from the beginning. But now with pizzicato strings and harps, he's incrementing the, the instruments. But I wanted to show you just what he did on that little B part there in the middle. Check this out. Sounds a little bit fantasy-like, sounds grand and, and glorious, majestic. Very cool, very cool. So here, He's being a little bit more openly uh, positive. First of all, he modulated, he, he changed the key of the song, he changed the group of notes that he was using. And he also introduced a surprise happy chord uh, here. This chord is so glorious, right? So majestic. Uh, I feel like this is 
this speaks to the to the vastness and to the beauty of of the, the little blocky uh minecraft world even though it's like kind of goofy and blocky it's vast and you know there's a lot of stuff to do a lot of stuff to explore and a lot of beauty in it so th this is a, a happy chord that wasn't supposed to be here it sounds uh very surprising and, and that increases that sensation of positivity and uh, majesty very cool and now he's gonna do the the pizzicato strings do you know what pizzicato strings are by the by the way i i say these words that i forget that a lot of people don't know what this sound is So pizzicato is just uh, an Italian word that we use in classical music. It just means playing the instrument with your finger. It, that's all it is. So what this is, is a string section with violins, violas, cellos and bass, basses. Just a, a, a regular string section in an orchestra. But instead of playing with the bow, they are plucking the strings with their fingers. I know. Like this. I know for a lot of you this is obvious, but a lot of people don't know this. And now they, they have the harp. Man, what a what a nostalgic song. This is the quintessential nostalgic song. It sounds nostalgic even the first time you hear it. This track was suggested on Patreon by Locus Azuro. Hooray Locus Azuro and Man, I probably wouldn't have heard this track again if Locus didn't suggest it to me. So if you have a track that is dear to you from a game that you love, get on Patreon, share that track with me so that I can share it with the world. After all, that's what this channel is all about, sharing the music from the games that we love with each other. So remember, whenever you're ready to spread your wings and go on a music journey again, I'll see you there.